All right. So in this example, what I'm going to do is evaluate all six trigonometric functions. So let's just kind of follow through my step-by-step -step process here. My step-by-step -step is going to be, first, is just sketch the angle. All right? And so by sketching the angle, we understand that half of a circle, guys, is pi. In terms of our denominator, that's 3 pi over 3. Well, this angle is bigger than 3 pi over 3, right? So I need to look at all the way around the circle, which would be 2 pi, which is the same thing as 6 pi over 3. So obviously, this angle is bigger than that. So we can see that we are almost there. We are just going to be pi over 3 short, correct? This is 5 pi over 3, and then you go an extra pi over 3 to take you 6 pi over 3. So first thing we do is just sketch the angle, just see where it's at. Make sure it's in the positive direction so you're going in counterclockwise. Um, sketch number, number two is to identify the reference angle. Remember, guys, the reference angle is the positive acute angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. Well, guys, if we're pi over 3 short to make it a full revolution, then we know that theta prime is equal to pi over 3. Step number three is find the point on the unit circle for your reference angle, which is basically the first quadrant, which is what you guys need to know, right? So you guys can look at the notes that I have on the board. Um, obviously, if you have some of your other notes, that's fine. But hopefully, you guys, we need to get at the angle for pi over 3. This coordinate point is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Then the next one is, well, that's the point for the reference angle, which is the same value as your point. Our difference is our point is not in the first quadrant, though, right? It's in the fourth quadrant. So therefore, we need to think what value is going to be negative, which coordinate, x or y, is going to be negative in the fourth quadrant? The y. The y. So step number four, or step number three, step number four is to find that coordinate point. Well, it's the same point. It's just now my negative coordinate is negative. Let's try it a little bit again. That's step number four. Cool? Anybody have any questions up to here? Because once you guys get to this point, everything else is rather simple because now we have the x and the y coordinates. And now we can just evaluate based on our understanding of our trigonometric functions for points on the unit circle. For points on the unit circle, the sine of theta is just the y-coordinate. Well, this is about as easy as I can get. Negative square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of my angle theta is just the x-coordinate. That's positive 1 half. The tangent, I'll come to the tangent actually later. Uh, the next one is the cosecant of theta, which is the reciprocal of this. So that's going to be a negative 2 over radical 3. And again, I'll do one rationalizing the denominator just to kind of refresh your brain. To, sim to get the radical off the denominator, we'll multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. So we'd get negative 2 radical 3 over 3. For the secant, that's just going to be 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. All right, now I'm leaving tangent and cotangent off just because these um, I'm going to slowly show you how to do these once, but my goal is for you guys to start recognizing these patterns so you don't have to keep on doing this work. So the tangent of theta is y over x. So that's square root of 3 over 2 divided, oops, negative square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. So do you guys remember what, ha what we do when we have a fraction divided by a fraction? We could just multiply by the reciprocal, right? on the top and the bottom. Here, this goes to 1, so we're just dealing with the numerator. You can see in the numerator, the 2's would divide out, and you're just left with the negative square root of 3. When you guys do the cotangent of theta, that's x over y, so now we have 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. And then you say, oh, what do we do when we divide a fraction by a fraction? The same thing. You can multiply by the reciprocal. And again, um, let's multiply by the negative. I'm not expecting you guys to have to do this every single time because you're going to notice these patterns keep on coming up. So I'm just showing you where these answers come from. Hopefully, you guys can start recognizing um, when they show up. So this denominator goes to 1. Again, the 2's divide out. 
and we're left with a negative 1 over the square root of 3, which now I can rationalize the denominator, and I'd get a negative square root of 3 over 3. And my work is very angled. Anybody have any questions to what I did? Yes? When you multiply the two negatives, would that make a positive? Yes, that makes that positive. That's not a negative, though. Oh, I that makes that a positive, and that's a negative. Would it be theta, or would it be theta prime? It's definitely theta. Theta prime reference angle is for the angle that's in the first quadrant. So technically, what I should have done, or another way to write this, is you would have written sine of 5 pi over 3. So this is sine of 5 pi over 3, cosine of 5 pi over 3, tangent of 5 pi over 3, cotangent of 5 pi over 3. Like, so you could write in the angle, and that's a lot of times what you're going to see, is that of that angle. I didn't write it in there just because I'm writing so much stuff. It's just a little bit more work. So since theta is equal to that, that's there. If you wrote, for instance, to answer your question, if you wrote like the sine of theta prime, well, what you're really doing then is finding the sine of pi over 3. Well, that's not what we're trying to find. We're not trying to find the trigonometric functions of pi over 3. We're trying to find the trigonometric functions of 5 pi over 3. So yes, we don't want to use theta prime. We're using, we want to use theta. Does that make sense? Because if you use theta prime, pi over 3, everything would be positive. You'd use that point. Everything's not positive in the fourth quadrant. That's why we have to use that point, which is for theta, not theta prime. But we use theta prime to find the points and then we apply the signs from the angle. Anything else? Yes? Well, again, if you look at the right triangle, I mean, I already erased it on my board. But if you guys remember for pi over 3, if you, draw, if you draw a triangle here, let's draw this triangle. Here's square root of 3 over 2. Here's 1 half. That's where we get the point, square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. But that's for theta prime. If you're doing the same angle reflected down here, this is now a negative square root of 3 over 2, and that's still a positive 1 half. What is the radius in both of these examples? What's the radius? 1. So again, what, you're, what we're looking at, and again, you can see that, again, it's just going to be this, this angle. This, now, this isn't, gets a little tricky as far as in this, but you can see. Wait a minute. Do I have that? Right. It's just the reciprocal of cosine. The, it's just. If you guys remember, cosine of theta is x for a point on the unit circle. So secant of theta would be 1 over x. So 1 over 1 half, if you multiply by the reciprocal, it's just equal to 2. So again, what we're looking for is, again, this is, this is important. Well, this kind of goes into our play. Like, Again, this is why having points on the inner circle are important. Because if you have a point on the inner circle, you don't need to do opposite over hypotenuse. This opposite over hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is 1. right? So when you know you have a point on the inner circle, you don't need to do opposite over hypotenuse. You can just cover that opposite point, which in this case represents the y coordinate. Does that kind of answer your question? Okay, We're going to do some practice um, and see how you guys do. And again, I will give you guys one problem to 